Welcome everyone to Healthy and Uplifted monthly webinar. Our topic for today is surviving on your budget. Um, it is very important during this time period that we learn to survive on our budget. We have excellent keynote speakers, moderator, co-hosts that will be helping us facilitate this dialogue that would help us get the tools necessary to survive during this hard time. Before we venture out to enjoy this dialogue, I would love to introduce my co-moderator. My co-moderator is amazing. I'm glad we started this Healthy and Uplifting webinar with her, and we're going to be ending this series with her as well. So let me introduce Dr. Jaju to you. Dr. Uche Jaju, um, if FACP is a hematologist and medical oncologist with a practice focus in breast cancer. She loves running, cooking, and entertaining. I will begin by introducing our keynote speaker. Dr. Ikeke is a cousin spirited healthcare executive. She has 17 years experience um, in patient-centered care. Her passion is to support healthcare leaders and agency improve and better integrate healthcare delivery processes and in the process, save lives. Our next keynote speaker is Dr. Kabari. Dr. Kabari graduated from the New York Chiropractic College in New York. He also is the one that brought chiropractic care to Nigeria. Next speaker is Dr. Latifat. Um, she is a practicing gastroenterologist as well as a money and mindset coach. She helps women and even men transform their relationship with money so they can live richly, spend well, and develop financial confidence. The last but not the least is our master keynote speaker, Miss Timolin. Miss Timolin is a money magnet, author, speaker, teacher, thought leader, and a world traveler. Please join me, you all, to welcome our keynote speakers, master keynote speakers, and session leaders. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. I was born and raised in Mississippi to sharecroppers and cooks. And that is kind of where I learned the wisdom of being a financial uh, manager and just learn, learning how to manage money well. We will look at financial stability through three lenses. Money is emotional, money is a tool, and money is legacy. Money is emotional at this whole concept of money is emotional. And especially because of certain people's experiences, we've had very traumatic history and experiences that will make money very emotional for certain people. And when I say that money is emotional, what I am saying is that our feelings act as partners with our spending habits. And because our feelings act as partners with our spending habits, we sometimes get into trouble. For example, if I'm having an argument with a friend or I didn't, I had a bad day at work, I didn't get the promotion. And then I said also speaking from historical where, you know, I said my family comes from sharecroppers. So there's a lot of trauma that's connected to these experiences. And so sometimes we, feel like, okay, I, if, in order to feel better, then I'll go out on a shopping spree in order, you know, like an alcoholic with alcohol, I'll drink so that I can feel better. So some of us use money in that same way. Instead of, um, you know, thinking about the, the bills that need to be paid. Oh, well, I'm not in my, I'm in my feelings right now. They're not helping me. So I'm going to go out and shop. That'll make me spend better. And so what I always like to talk about is um, let's look at our feelings and be able to distinguish, you know, our feelings from our, our wants. And it's just like what Big Mama would say growing up. It's like you never go to the grocery store when you're hungry. So never go to Amazon when you're in your feelings. And now, and the next thing is that we do need to have a budget. Your budget is your best friend. All it does is tell your money where to go. In my book, I call it Mind Over Money, How to Live Like a Millionaire on Any Budget. And what that means is you want to live the life of your dreams on this earth. So your budget and your money are your resources that will help you to do that. We'll go on to the next slide. It says money is a tool. And what does stability represent? Money to me 
stability represents the ability to flourish in a great economy and to maintain it even if the kind of economy is slow so what regardless of what's happening when you're using money like a tool you're not subject to the fluctuations in the economy and that is what stability represents to me it means being able to weather any storm that comes along financially because you have budgeted because you are using money as a tool and that means you are using your current wealth to create more wealth in the next slide money is legacy and oftentimes when we think about legacy we think about money and passing money down to the next generation which is a big part of legacy when you look at the you know the famous families of the world and regardless of your political affiliation you you know you've heard about the kennedy compound you've heard about the bush ranch you've heard about the royal family in the palace the clinton library these are also part of their this is also part of their legacy and even as working people we need to think about our legacy too. And it's, it's, yes, it is the wealth, the, the resources, the finances that you pass down to the next generation. From this day forward, figure out how to start saving. And even if 20% seems a bit high right now, then think about 10%, think about 15%, because your legacy is something that you're gonna pass on to the next generation. Wow, what a great talk, legacy. Uh, tool, emotional, um, uh, the beauty, the beauty of making a legacy off of what you're passionate about, right? Yeah. So I'd like for you to comment on the difference between income and wealth. And mm -hmm. there's something that is a big burden for many of us in some, um, some, some parts of the world and some racial ethnic groups, which mm -hmm. is the extended family responsibility. So could you comment on saving, keeping in mind extended family responsibilities? The difference between saving and, and I think what I'm hearing is that we are not necessarily, we're saying, I don't have enough money to save. I've got so many family responsibilities, family obligations, and not only am I taking care of myself and my family, maybe I've got my sister's child with me. Maybe my, my you know, husband's you know, sister's daughter is living with us or something along those lines. And I get it. And I know that these are challenging times in this area. And I do think that, you know, everyone's financial situation and household is different, but that's where you really go into that structure and that plan that I'm talking about. So maybe everyone's not able to contribute financially, but somebody's, everybody's able to contribute something. And so if, let's just say, for example, if you've got children in that environment and you're paying childcare fees, then maybe one of the older children, maybe the one who's living with you can, you can work out some sort of arrangement where, you know what, in, in exchange for the resources and that we're providing here, maybe you can watch the children when they get out of school from two to five, and that will eliminate childcare expense for me. Thank you again, um, Ms. Timoline. Again, I, I definitely agree, and that's why we are putting up this webinar to talk about financial wealth. The next question will go to Dr. Kabari, and it's for Dr. Kinsley Kabari. Okay. Um, hi, sir. So, sir, you, you heard um, Timoline talk about the emotional part of money or money as a tool. How can we immigrant build legacy when we are starting from negative? What I would like to uh, elaborate a little bit on in terms of money is, first, I believe that we need to understand money and what money is. Because a lot of people don't understand money. They just look at it as something that can just be spent and it will come again. But that's not how it works. True that money moved the world around and uh, we cannot survive without money, but we need to understand money, we need to understand our value, and we need to understand what we are worth. Just to give you an example, uh, back in the early 2000s, a gentleman by Dave Shepard, which you guys, some of you probably know him, the comedian, uh, started a show on Comedy Central. And Comedy Central didn't think the show was going to do well, but this gentleman knew his worth, so he took the risk and started the show. Now, the show did very well, 
and Comedy Central came around and wanted to take ownership of the show and write a very stiff contract. He says, no, I am not going to accept it. He walked away from $50 million because he knows his worth. So once you know your worth, you understand that you cannot be bought. So no one can buy you, no one can afford to buy you. So you have to know your worth and you have to understand money. And being in business, being an immigrant, coming to this country with zero dollar in my pocket, you know, uh, we have to work very hard because we have that, uh, that generation that we come in with zero money. So we have to build everything from almost like a negative. And that's a whole different mindset. Um, you have to create a budget. You have to have a fixed saving and variable expenses. You have to organize your bank account. Um, you have to begin living on your budget like a paycheck plan. You have to track your expenses and you have to review your progress. Thanks so much. That's wonderful. I was trying to write down the things you said, Dr. K. Kabari. You mentioned create a budget, expenditures and variable expenditures. Mm -hmm. And you said stick to your budget. And then you said track expenses mm -hmm. and either review or monitor progress. Does that sound right? Correct. Because when people were furloughed and lost jobs, mm -hmm. some people went from uh, living somewhere to being homeless, right? Because they had no true wealth. I want to ask a question to Dr. OKK, who's on the call. I understand you have a business and I want you to please uh, shed some light. How do you move from 100% income dependence gradually to actually having your own wealth? Having someone on your side is stronger than having money. Because this wealth that Timolin talks about, Dr. K. Kabari talks about, you don't build it in a silo. You don't build it as an island. You need the right relationships to align to help you do that. Now, for us who are parents with kids growing, the kids have a safe haven we can create for them. Because when they're not in that earning age, they can now build the tools they need to be prepared. As Dr. Kika Barry mentioned, you have a lot of the celebrities who didn't have the tools. So wealth is not just giving me something I inherit, it's teaching me the how-to at the same time. Wow, Dr. KK, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I think you just wrapped this all up, like investing in relationships. I, I, I think it's paramount, and I hope like we will form a healthy and uplifted family, like Timolin said, and then we can work together and help support each other because that's our goal. And I really want you guys to be connected, chat in the chat box and get each other's information. But now we are going to open it up to like, questions from our attendees. Laurie had a question and Kamara had a good one. Actually, two questions. Like, um, one is about men. Men sometimes spend all the money they have. They've invested all the money over the years throughout their career. And maybe they want a, a beautiful lady somewhere and they want to spend all of it to get a lady as a wife, you know, buying them houses, expensive cars and everything, taking them on trips. At the end of the day, maybe they, if they succeed in having the lady, now they go broke. Is it a need to have a wife? And the second thing is about COVID and how budgets have been affected. For example, I live in New York. Um, before COVID, I had my budget, and which was relatively low. Then COVID came, and it change, changes everything. So now, in those kind of situations, how can people fit into the adjustments that happen along the line because of natural disasters or other you know, unforeseen circumstances. Dr. Kubara, can you answer his question? Is there a need or a want if you use all your money to find a spouse? Well, you cannot buy a wife. That is number one. Number one, you don't marry someone because you feel sorry for them. Um, you don't marry somebody because of money. You don't marry someone because of anything. You have to marry somebody in your class. So the person has to be in your class. If it's not in your class, you could spend as much money as you want. You could go on the best trip in the world and it's not going to work. All right, great. And the second question will be um, for Dr. KK. Did you hear his question about budgeting and thriving during the pandemic? That said, 
when people say budget, I've been where you are um, in my own ways over the years where you don't even have the space in mind to have enough, let alone budget. So when those times come, you dig deep because you have to create the income to budget. So there's a time and place for everything. When you're in that spot, you hone in and create income. And income may not be your traditional apply for a job. It might be digging deep to see what are the talents I have that I'm not using. And how can I turn that around? It could mean you going to offer being an intern for a month and see solutions that you can bring to the table and spin that into income. So don't limit yourself. Open your eyes into what are the options. There's plan A, plan B, plan C, plan C. Sometimes I go all the way to F because failure is not an option. There's one I wanted to ask that I saw written by Latasha Cleveland. You know, she mentions I'm spending a lot when I'm stressed, I think, or I'm shopping a lot when I'm stressed. And I thought, guilty, you know, so, <laughs> so that can sabotage saving, right? How do we learn a bit of discipline? So first things first, know what makes you happy. If spending, even when everything's going well, gives you a little bit of joy, that's okay. Put a budget for it. So maybe I won't spend $100, I'll spend $10. I know friends of mine who say, I'll go to a thrift store instead and go to the corner where I see a brand new tag. So you, it's not an all or nothing. But what I will say to you, if spending is a thing you know you enjoy to do, then always have a budget A, B, and C, which means level one, two, three. Level one means when I'm down and out <laughs> and I have nothing. So I can spend $2. And the top is, oh, you know what? Things are going well, and I can probably spend a thousand. What do you do when you find yourself in this situation in COVID and, you know, your job is gone and your savings are gone and, you know, you want, you know, have the desire to leave a legacy, um, but you're single and you don't have the, the family structure or the support, you're all on your own. So what is a practical way, just one practical thing you can do? Thank you so much, Laurie. Laurie touches, um, touches a very good point. Um, if you are depressed during this time, please seek medical care, okay? Because yes, depression, as most psych um, psychiatrists would say, is multifactorial, right? So they could be triggers, and this period could be a trigger. And if you feel you need to seek help, please do not be embarrassed and seek that help. So thank you, Laurie, for bringing that point. All right, so our next event, uh, monthly webinar, will be on November 8th. It's going to be uh, on maternal birthing health, and we're going to be talking about Black maternal health. We're just going to be talking about, is this safe as a Black woman to, to birth in the United States? So it's going to be a really, really good conversation. Before we switch gears, I want to thank Dr. Jaju. Dr. Jaju started this webinar series with me, Modern Sex Successfully During COVID. It's now ending or ended. Um, so I'm glad she's here today to finish, finish this webinar with me. So I'm very, very grateful. If you haven't attended the previous three webinars, please check out our YouTube page, Healthy and Uplifted, for you to watch them. They were really informative. They have really changed lives. For me, the last one, especially when we talked about um, staying fit and focused, has really changed my life. I think I've lost some weight just by practicing the tips that were given to me. And I think this webinar also will change my life as Timolene talks about budgeting, right? She said, don't be afraid of budgeting. Make sure your money works for you. And Dr. KK comes in and says, you know what? Investment is relationship as well. It's not just money. And Dr. K. Kabari talks about finding the right mentor. Oh my gosh, you guys, I am always filled by hosting this and all right, again, without a team, there's no healthy and uplifted. I'm really humbled to have an amazing team of people that sit together to plan this program, to make it work. So thank you. I want to start off by thanking Brianna Chicheri. She's a medical student all the way from Houston, and she still makes time to be our tech support during this webinars. I am so grateful. Thank you, Brianna. Ethelene Peacock is our media specialist. Thank you so much for making sure our programming is acceptable. 
and and I'm just grateful for you, Bola Adams. Bola is my brain. She is my intern. She works so hard to coordinate this programming, reaching out to our speakers, making sure their bio is up to date. Bola, thank you. And it is me, Dr. Azuma, um, founder, executive producer of this show. Next is Noble in DVC. He's our creative director. He designs all our flyers, makes sure we're correct and just helps us manage our YouTube channel. So thank you, Noble. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He's all the way from Nigeria and his flyers are amazing. Thank you, thank you. And then Alfred Kamara, thank you so much. Kamara is a... Um, well-known journalist he has worked for many organizations while he was in west africa actually africa but he decided to further his education by getting a master's in journalism thank you alfred for making sure um, our work is quality i appreciate you the next person the last but not the least is latasha cleveland latasha is our exec um, assistant executive producer director she just helps us helps out wherever we need her. We are so grateful. So again, thank you for this team. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you.